Hi and welcome to Teach the Table. I'm Nathan and this is the game of ham. According to the publisher, ham stands for hating all mankind. So it goes without saying that this is a game for adults that won't easily be offended by crude or absurd humor. The core mechanic of the game, similar to Apples and Apples or Cards Against Humanity, where one player, the judge, draws and reads aloud one gray card, which will ask a question or have a statement with blanks to fill in. All other players will have 10 pink cards in their hand, and they'll choose one or sometimes more that they feel are the funniest or best respond to that gray card. The judge will then shuffle up all the responses, read them all aloud, and choose a winner. Each round like this is called a trick. One thing that sets us apart from other games like this is there's a modular board which you need to move a piece across, and there are additional cards which allow players to influence other players' pieces or the judge themselves. The rules include over 10 pages of optional or variant rules, which I'll let advanced players explore, but I do want to mention that there are also ways to play with just the cards or just the board by itself, and pretty much any way else you can think of. Not trying to call you or your friends basic, but the basic standard game is all I'm going to explain in this video. There are four double-sided board tiles which can be arranged in any way that creates a continuous path from one to the next, but this configuration is recommended for first-timers. Each player has a game piece in the starting white spot, and the goal is to get to the gold spot first to win. You also need to get there with the exact number of movement spaces, and you can't move forward and backward in the same turn at will. You can always choose which direction to go on your turn, but you can't double back. So meaning if you decide you're going to go forward, you couldn't use half of your movement to go forward and then go back some more on the same turn. The exceptions to this are if you reach the final goal spot, if you have too much movement, you can get to the spot and then come back however many spots. That is allowed to double back in that case. The other exception is if you reach a dead end, you can always double back in the same round. You are allowed to zigzag, so if there's two columns right next to each other like this, you could zigzag back and forth between them to use up your movement points. Landing on top of another player's piece when you end your movement will bounce that player back to the nearest white bounce spot. These serve as checkpoints, so when you get bounced backwards, you'll stop there. In this manner, if you're on a white bounce spot, you can't be bounced backward further. You'll just stay on that spot. You may rarely encounter a gray bounce spot, which protects players that are sitting directly on it, but it won't let players be. To start, all players draw 10 pink cards and use whatever method they like to pick the first judge. As described earlier, they'll play a gray card and other players will play a pink card in response. If more than one pink card is needed, put the first one on the bottom face down, so that when they're flipped over, the top card will always read first. Players will always draw additional pink cards so that they always have 10 cards in their hand. The judge will choose the winning card or sets of cards, and that player will gain the gray card and become the judge for the next round. On the bottom of the gray card that you gain, there are two numbers. The player who won that card chooses one of those numbers and moves this many spots on the board. Or, if you're playing with eight or more players, you can choose to move the sum of those numbers, eight spots in this case. Landing on a colored spot on the board grants you a card of the matching color. And these can be used now or saved up for later use, depending on what the card says on the bottom. For example, this card says it can be played at any time. Landing on a numbered spot lets the player move this many spaces forward. If they end up being pushed to a colored spot, they do not grab a colored card in this case. Colored cards can additionally be gifted to other players to grant yourself some free movement. Giving to a player of your choice gets you one movement, or giving to a random player grants you two movement. We all know nobody likes re-gifting, so players who gain gifted cards can't gift them to someone else for the next three turns. Additionally, gray cards will have H, A, or M on them, and if you've gained cards that can spell ham, you can spend them to block a colored card, or block a player from gifting a card. If a colored card affects multiple players, you can even choose to use ham to only partially block it, allowing it to affect only certain people. Some conflicts may arise where multiple colored cards are played at once, and in that case all cards should be stacked in the order they were played, and resolved from top to bottom. That means that the last card played is going to be the one that happens first. Alternatively, gifting a card or playing ham are separate actions, and they happen in the order that they were played. Any other ambiguities or questions are settled by the host. 
And that's how you play the game of ham. The first player to reach the final gold spot wins, or whatever other win condition the group decided beforehand. As advanced players, you'll get to decide on alternative conditions which end the game and choose a winner, or a number of additional variants. The world is your pink, papery, rules oyster. Thanks for watching Teach the Table. If this was helpful to you, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. And as always, don't forget to have fun.